everyone. Welcome back to. Oh, hold on. Hold on. <sighs> Sorry, I have to stay hydrated. Hey, welcome back to the fire you can't put out. Okay, hopefully everybody know what I'm what I was doing there. So, uh, welcome back to what? <laughs> the fire you can't put out. Yeah, we like I said, we're gonna get hate mail just just for that. So, well, today we actually have、uh, a lot of people here、um, virtually. So we have、uh, our regular crew,、uh, Melvin and Angela. Hey, Angela. Hey. And I'm Kevin, and we also have Leo. Who Hi, is, Leo. Hey. Hello. So Leo is actually uh, the uh, creator and uh, the uh, uh, administrator? Man, man, administrator, the managing person for the uh, uh, liberal Spokane、uh, Facebook page. Is that right? Yahoo. It is. Yeah, it keeps keeps me going for sure.、Yeah. Let's make talk, sure I stay well informed. Right. Let's talk a little bit about that. You know, once I do all the housekeeping stuff. So once again,、uh, here's the housekeeping stuff.、Uh, we have a Facebook page. Our Facebook page. The address is facebook dot com slash tfycpo, which stands for the fire <laughs> you can't put out. <laughs> You know, I really don't know how long we can go with this. So, hey, but, I'm gonna keep going. But it's、uh, again, it's facebook.com/tfycpo, and we have an email address is tfycpo at gmail dot com. Say it again, it's tfycpo at gmail dot com. So talk to us,、uh, agree with us, disagree with us, and、uh, if you have stuff that you want us to cover,、uh, just、uh, let us know. Uh, also, again, we need to thank the guys at the Open Sky Radio. Give us a lot of、uh, tech. I'm sorry. Give us a lot of technical,、uh, a lot of technical support.、Uh, recently, actually, there are some、uh, technical problems with、uh, not、uh, TFYCPO, but with another of my podcasts. And、uh, they help us, you know, fix all that. And you know, it's 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 not easy. You know, it's all the IT stuff. So. Yep, all the uh, all the、uh, housekeeping stuff out of the way. Hey,、uh, Leo. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the、uh, Liberal Spokane page. You know how it came about and、um, what's going on, etc. Well, I I just got having lived in Spokane for a good long time now. Raised a couple of kids、uh, in Spokane area schools.、Uh, I just got tired of being、uh, a minority person here. I'm. I'm White, obviously, but I'm a minority because I'm a, I'm a liberal. Got it. We're so, so severely outnumbered here that I just thought it was time that we had somewhat of a voice. So I founded the Liberal Spokane page、right. and just started posting my feelings and appropriate articles. I thought that、uh, obviously the media in this area doesn't cover. Right. And coming up with a few things here and there too that、uh, seem to escape the national attention. Right. 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 So,、uh, you know, you, running a page like that,、uh, it's a lot of work. You know, I can see you consistently. Oh, by the way, so just search a liberal Spokane on Facebook, and you'll find the page. And、uh, you know, running a page like this, especially in Spokane, it's probably going to be a lot of hard work because、uh, you you have your share of trolls running around, and、uh, do you have to deal with a lot of that? Um, you know, surprisingly, that's been pretty free of、uh, troll behaviors. I've had a few come in on occasion.、Uh, on the first one, I actually took the time to respond to, and they actually just gave up because they saw that they couldn't make a, make a point that was valid.、Uh, <laughs> I love、oh. that. See that? I actually, and we got into the whole troll discussion on a show a couple of weeks ago. And and we all disagree a little. And I actually engage with those、um, <clears throat> bad people as well, you know. So I that's 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 great that you do that. Man, some some of those some of those trolls that can be really vicious. I've come、yeah. up with a couple. Come up against a couple of them that、uh, you know I've had exchange for you know four, five, six responses,、right. and they just start getting so gross and so vulgar that I've just said, you know, that's it. You're out of here. Your history, goodbye. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Eventually, you have, eventually you have to block them.、Uh, I I have a policy where if they that racism,、uh, misogynist, you know,、uh, misogyny, name、um, calling, 
Yeah, I, I, I guess I dump them right away. If they, yep. if they, if they use a swear word, I'll say don't use the swear words, and then they use another one. I'll just, I'll kick them off. I say, hey, if you want to come here for a discussion, that's absolutely fine. But if you just want to come here and be a d bag, you're, you're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, well, so uh, search, look for that page again. It's Liberal Spokane. Just search for that on uh, Facebook and uh, give it a like and get the news. So okay, so today let's go to our first thing, and I don't think we can get away with not talking about the State of the Union address, right? Uh, I I personally think it's pretty uh, aggressive uh, in a good way, uh, laid out a lot of agendas, and there is. Uh, a few things that I would have a little bit of uh, qualms about, but I'm going to talk about that later. So uh, especially one thing that I'm going to talk about that later. But uh, anybody want to go first in terms of reactions? Uh, yeah, I, I liked the speech a lot, and there were there were quite a few things in it. I'm glad he mentioned. I'm glad he mentioned high speed rail. I'm glad he mentioned. Oh yes. Um, I'm glad that he mentioned preschool. Very important. I'm, uh, you know, not using the word spending, using the word invested because that's obviously that's that's honestly that's what it is. Right. It's investing. Right. And I and I really like the fact that see in the last couple of of these, uh, I mean, these shootings have been going on for so so long, especially since Obama's been president. That they've brought shooting victims to every single state of the union, but they've never ever addressed it. Right. And the way he ended the state of, I mean, so they brought oh. they brought victims along and victims' families along this time. And then at the end, he really put emphasis. They deserve a vote. And he started naming them. They deserve a vote. You know, Gabby Gifford deserves a vote. Newtown deserves a vote. Like he really – and I just imagine Ted Nugent sitting there in the audience – Already just terribly uncomfortable because there's, 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 it's a, it's a wide array of people. There's, there's gays and there's, and there's blacks and there's Asians. He's already uncomfortable. And then Obama starts saying this thing that, that gets a, a nice crowd reaction. And I thought Boner was just a, just, yeah. uh, of course he just sat there stone. Like even for, even for raising the, the pay for, for women, I mean, it, not to where it's higher than men, but at least to where women get paid the same as men. He just sat there with his arms crossed and he's grumpy. Right. Cat. He's, nah, 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 speaking, you know? speaking of which, here. speaking of which, if you dig around Facebook, there is a, uh, capped, uh, capped picture yes. of, uh, when, when they talk about the equal pay. When, Obama, when the president talked about equal pay, and then they pan yeah. to the Republican side, mm. there, mm-hmm. was this, uh, there was this there was this woman a Congress uh, person, I guess, uh, in in a white coat shaking her head, and guess who is sitting right next to that person? Our own <laughs> Kathy McMahon. Morris Rogers. <laughs> so, Wonder. right, yeah, Leo. Yes. So, so what, what were you going to say? I just said wonderful. You know, you can always. Depend on uh, uh, good old Kathy McMorris Rogers to be their lockstep. Right. Yeah. So, all right. So, I you know, it, it, I think. Well, okay. So here's here's an incredible thing. I mean, you know, they. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just crazy to me that that they were talking about you know equal pay for women, and you have you just show like Virginia Fox was there, you know, just the camera right on these three Republican women. Women that like no reaction, they just you know, the same sad face, and they're not they're not uh, they're not applauding, applauding, you know. Well, well, they also had the Violence Against Women Act. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, which same which thing. just just uh, they just the Senate just took the vote like right before the State of the Union yes. happened, and guess you know there are twenty two I believe twenty two senators vote, voted against it, and guess what Rubio is one of them. They were all of them that voted against were white Republican men. Right. Yep. Right. Oh, and you know what? Here's a surprise. I dig around and I'm pretty sure I'm right on this, but Idaho, only one of the senators voted no. Uh, Who was it? Uh, I know it's not. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to say his name correctly. I know it's not, I know. I know it's not Crapple. Crapple. It's the other guy. So Crapple actually voted yes for it. That's so, amazing. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty wow. crazy, isn't it? But you know, Lindsey Graham, of course, you, you can always expect him to be there. Um, or Ted Cruz, you can always expect Ted Cruz. Well, we're, we're probably going to talk about Ted Cruz a little bit when we, you know, drive our conversation into the whole Hegel situation. So, in yeah. the Violence Against Women Act, did you know that you lose your Second Amendment right if you're convicted 
of domestic violence. That's what I mean. And so because the NRA has a problem with that, so does every other Republican. I th- actually, you should probably I think that's a good you should probably lose your gun rights if you if you beat a woman. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But no, that's a controversial idea because LaPierre came up and he said, no, legalize murder. Oh, you know, I mean, in terms of, okay, I can't believe, uh, we, we're, we're back to gun gun control. No, 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 we're not. It's not inescapable. No, I just thought of something, like, right away. You know, the, the South African, uh, the, the Blade Runner. Oh, yeah, my Blade Runner. gosh. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, that was amazing. Uh, that story is, it's pretty much over. I mean, over as in, I mean, he's charged with murder. Yes. Um, he's going to be, never going to be... I don't. I don't know what's happening. Okay, I, I'm not getting the latest that news. Is, I don't know. That is the weirdest I think, story. I think the, the 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 thing I read this morning when it happened is he thought his girlfriend is a burglar, which doesn't right. make any sense to me. But you know, I mean, it's south of Africa, and I heard you know things are a lot different over there. And he, you know, he's famous. He has a little money, so you know, I mean, the, it's it's a t- totally different environment there. So I I'm not saying I'm not making judgment on anything. Right, but the whole thing sounds so crazy to me. Actually, heard, I, I, NPR I NPR debunked that story okay. this morning that that, it, that he thought she was he, she was a, a burglar. So yeah, uh, so it's a dom- trying to break in. Right, so no, it's, a, it's yeah. people had heard screaming and shouting. So it's a domestic violence situation, sounds right? Like, and oh he's God. known for not treating other domestic partners well. Oh my God! You know, yeah. Then. Then it tied 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 up with with what we just talked about. I mean, if yes. you if you have a history of abusing your 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 partner or your spouse, you shouldn't mm-hmm. have a weapon. Agreed. You know. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Let's drive back. Let's drive back to the uh, um, state yeah, of the union. Yeah. So, so could I could I say something? Yes. Yeah, I loved the way it started. It started 51 years ago. John F. Kennedy declared to this chamber that the Constitution makes us not rivals for power, but partners for progress. I love that. And then to end it with, they deserve a vote. Mm -hmm. They deserve a vote. How perfect was this? Beginning and, I mean, he just, he put this together. It was so well crafted. And I know he has speech writers, but this was a very well crafted. Well, I heard he's very involved. He's very involved in in, in all the speeches that he, he gives, especially for this one. Which is, you know, the biggest one during the year, I think. So right, and it, 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 it isn't just good speechwriters. I mean, Bush had speechwriters, and he still couldn't talk. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Leo, what did you take away from it? What did you like about it? Well, I, I, I like the fact that he uh, talked uh, about entitlements in a uh, a little different way. You know, right. the, the fact that they're not uh, uh, actually entitlements; that people actually contribute. To those, and that that this yes. should be a nonpartisan right. issue. That uh, uh, that's you know that right, right, right. kind of tongue tied right there. But that um, yeah. I think that uh, that he's absolutely right. I, I spent a lifetime, uh, forty odd years now, paying into into my social security. That's not an entitlement. I'm sorry. Right. It's it's an insurance policy, right, and that's right. the way yes. these people have got to start looking at this. This is the way. We've got to start expressing it and get away from uh, letting them control the dialogue and spin that we're all a bunch of takers. It's just not that's not the way it is. Right. 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 Especially we all you know, we all contribute to this pool of money at some point. I'm no. only I'm only 34 years old, but I just realized that I've been contributing to Social Security and Medicare for 17 years now. I'm only, I'm only in my mid 30s, and I've already been contributing for 17 years. Yeah, when when I get to that point, you better believe I'm going to collect, and it's and it's because I've been paying into it, not because I've got my hands out. Right. Exactly. It, right. You got it. You got it. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a very good point because, you know, uh, you know, turn he. During during the uh, during a lot of the speech, uh, he's trying to turn this. And I, you know, during the speech, I, I'm pretty. Sh- and I'm thinking to myself, you know, there are a lot of stuff here that the Republicans can just throw the whole socialist argument against him. And lo and behold, you know, Rubio came out, and you know, bam, right there, right. But yes. you know, um, and, and, yeah, and I really appreciate, and I, I totally agree with you, Leo, there that, that uh, you know he's trying to turn the argument around, and, as in you know the government is supposed to be there to to help people, and in order to do that, yes, we have to use resources, and the government has resources. The resources is taxpayers' money, 
You actually, know? in the, the, the Bill of Rights, uh, it, it actually states that that's one of the main duties of of our government is to right. look out for the welfare of the people, the, the well-being of the citizenry. Oh, my God. You just said another buzzword, welfare. <laughs> so, you know, I just I just thought of something, too. Um, you know, this is uh, totally baby related. But so I, I, I try do a lot of driving and I listen to a lot of podcasts. And I one of the thing I listen to is uh, Mark Marin, you know, WTF. Yep. And he is uh, interviewing a, um, a Carl Reiner, Carl Reiner. Uh, mm-hmm. The other day, just just recently, and Carl Reiner says, you know, um, he got he got into acting uh, because of the government, because he got out of the army, and after World War II, and the alphabet soup thing that set up by FDR actually helped him to uh, start his career in ha- in acting and all that, and he's uh, seems like to me at least uh, Carl Reiner and. Mark Maron, too, they're both, you know, believers in this, as in, you know, the government is supposed to be there to help people to start stuff, to become, you know, better. So, you know, that's that's probably one of the one of the things that the president want to emphasize. And there are a lot of there are a lot of, there are a lot of stuff in this thing. It, you, you know, when we were coming up with uh, a way to describe this show, uh, I initially started off with we need to redefine government, and I think he did a fantastic job of that by saying it's not – you know, I, I don't remember verbatim, and I didn't print out a speech, and it's making the point that it's not an it or a thing. It's you, right. and he made that point very, very clearly. Right, right. He also made the point that we need to keep promises we've made right. yeah. to our citizens. Right. Keep the promises we've made to them, yeah. which is Social Security, Medicare, programs like that. Right. I mean, you know, I mean, there, there are, there is, there, there are always abuses when you have a program that in that mag, that kind of magnitude. Right. And you know, I mean, that I think the right frame of mind should be, you know, keep keep an eye on that, but I have to understand that, you know, statistically, there has to be a percentage. That uh, that you know a percentage of abuse. You just want to keep that number down as much as possible. You're not going to you're not going to just because there's uh, say 0.5 percent of abuse um, that you're going to you know sacrifice the the uh, 99.5 percent of everybody else to exactly you know exactly you know and there has to be enforcement written into these things which there is and has been ignored for a long time. This is one thing I've been reading about over the last couple of days. Is that uh, for the second year in a row now, uh, the enforcement arm of um, the, I, I guess it's uh, uh, adjutant general's office or something. Right. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they have actually, for the second year in a row, set a record for uh, recovering fraud, uh, fraud uh, monies from abusers of the system. People right. who have nice. been overcharging and who have been. Uh, just outright fraud on the Medicare system. Right. Oh, yeah. I think, if I remember right, it was somewhere over four, between four and five billion dollars they recovered this year. When I pointed that out to a, one of my my uh, right wing uh, acquaintances, he just laughed at it and said, four billion dollars. So what? It's like, yeah, you're going to recover <laughs> a trillion. A billion dollars. here and a billion there. And pretty soon you're talking about some money, right? Exactly. You put, pretty soon you got a pile of cash. Right. Yeah. Right. Tell him how many schools you could build with four billion dollars. I mean, of course, they don't like to speak that language. I think I, another thing is you can't put people in charge of these programs that have that are sworn to destroy these programs. Right. You know, like right. like like Bill Bennett. Bill, Bill Bill Bennett came out, you know, in 1980, and he goes, "I hate public education. We should get rid of public education." And then when Ronald Reagan became president, he goes, "Hey, Bill." You want to you want to run the education department? You can't purposely put people in charge of those programs that have, have that are sworn enemies to those programs. Right, Bill exactly. Bennett. Bill no Bill wonder. You want to take uh, t- take the top top uh, fifteen stories off the United Nations building? You can be our new ambassador. You can be the ambassador <laughs> to the UN because you want to blow up half the building. Right, right. I, you know, it's so amazing. I mean, yeah, so amazing. These a lot of these um, a lot of these elected officials on the Republican side. 
they, they keep saying like you know they they don't like the government they hate the government well get the get the hell out get out of the government you <laughs> you are the government yeah i mean do we some all are. you know but instead you instead, instead of just just barking you know do something to make it more efficient right you know instead instead of trying to demonize the entire thing that you are part of that doesn't work what what does that tell about you you're not really doing anything good about it, right? You know what you're drawing no. a nice salary. <laughs> Do you know what Congress's approval rating is right now? Uh, no, it's, oh. it's, it's it's right around it's right around eight percent. Do you oh. know? No, <laughs> no, no, hold on. Twelve percent in the last four or five years. I'll tell you what. Uh, so. Universal background checks is polling at about ninety two percent. If you do the math right there, it's a hundred percent. Yeah, so so sixty two percent of Republicans approve of background checks. Yes, they now, do. Hold on. So all of the people that uh, that like what Congress is doing are also the same people that don't like background checks. See, but I, I want to make a larger point. They've gone from serving just the top one percent to serving eight percent of the people. Hey, that's eight times. Almost more more than they used to represent. Wow. They, they they now have eight percent of the people that are on board with everything that they're eight, doing. But see, that's a that's a sliver. Eight, you know, eight percent. That's like Dick an eight percent. No, no, Dick. Now, now, Dick Cheney, nineteen percent. Now, now let's be, now let's be nice to Dick. If I may call him Dick. Must we be nice to him? He had eleven percent when he left office. I think he's down to like a nickel now. <laughs> oh man! Oh, I was Dick. nice to him. Dick Poor Chief. night. Poor oh, guy. Yeah. For a dick. <laughs> the other thing I, another thing I liked about the uh, uh, State of the Union address was uh, the new focus, the refocus on alternative energy. Right. Oh, I yes. did like that. Oh yeah, like, uh, and Melvin, you're already, already strong point with me going way back to the the. the Late fifties, early sixties, when I became politically aware. Right. Yeah, uh, d d clean energy just makes so much sense. I don't use any of the climate change arguments or anything like that when I'm talking to people okay. uh, about this topic. I I'd like to make the point that fossil fuels and internal combustion engines are 19th century technology. Right. This is the 21st century, folks. Right. Where when are we going to come into into the present day, when are we going to start reflecting the progress uh, that we've made as a as a human species, the knowledge exactly. that we've acquired? When are we going to start putting that to use? Right. Well, our Barbara Boxer and Bernie Sanders just introduced an incredibly aggressive bill, uh, environmental bill uh, today. Um, I have I, I I've I heard Bernie talking about it earlier today because he was on Tom Hartman today, uh, so I haven't got a chance to go read the text of it. But obviously, it's drawing tons of criticism, which means you know it's good. <laughs> you bet. Well, you just you just have to look at who's opposing it. Right? Exactly. You, you can, and you got you got a pretty good idea what the heck is going. The oil on. companies don't like it. The Koch brothers don't like it. Well, you know what? Chances are I'm gonna love it. Right. You know. I mean, the, the first the first sending ovation just me in my uh, you know in my study. Is uh, you know when he said um, uh, high speed rail when we said oh, I, I, I know I know Melvin already brought that up but high speed rail I mean there is this uh, uh, thing there's a, this meme uh, thingy on uh, Facebook that got passed around somebody uh, kind of did a did a conceptual uh, uh, you know like a co conceptual thing about what a high speed rail system would look like in our country. Yeah, and I'm like, well, it would be so cool if we can pull that together. Um, however, there is no line that you know the the, the line that runs from Seattle to uh, to uh, Chicago is is great that runs through Spokane. So I hope that happened too, right? Even imaginary, yeah. you know, plan. But I think, and and then I, I there is an argument with me with a friend about this on on uh, on on one occasion, and she is not she doesn't think that we have it in us to actually do this, which I totally disagree because see, see how much, how much time and money is wasted in flying right now. And yeah, it's, it's just not, in, it's not at all energy conservative. It, 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 it is bad. It's, it's very hard. inefficient means of travel, right? Flying, yes. you know? Yes. Yeah. So a lot of, you know, I know, Boeing has been telling us that you know how much 787, which isn't flying right now, by the way, 787 and you know the 747-8, how much um, that 
new technology is going to save in fuel. But still, you got Leo is right. I mean, it's it's a very inefficient way to fly uh, to to well, travel. You have to fly. Right. Well, you look at, you look at the the um, railroad ads. There's been an ad on for at least a couple of years now, talking about how the diesels use one gallon of gas to haul an uh, un, uh, uh, a ton of freight. Yeah, what, amount of yeah of yeah, cargo. Yeah. Uh, one hundred miles. Gallon. Right. Uh, well, it's it's one it's one gallon of fuel moves a ton of freight for four hundred and some odd miles. Like it's it's pretty. Uh, I forget the name of the company, but yeah, I've, I've been hearing those ads for a while now. Is that CRX? It's, uh, yeah, I believe it is. But you know what? General Motors makes those diesel engines. Why are aren't they able to put that sort of energy efficient technology in our? Our, our vehicles we drive around every day. Yeah. I drive well, a diesel. Uh, I drive a diesel truck for a living, and I'm probably getting nine miles to the gallon right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Hey. So well, you know. You know. What? I would settle with one. I would settle with half of what Japan has in terms of high speed rail in yeah. the U.S. Half. Well, there you go. Been, you've been if, elsewhere in the world. I mean, how many of us have traveled someplace and actually used the rail system? In well, another part of the world, Europe's is fantastic. Well, just talk about what what I know very well. You know, Hong Kong, right? Yeah. The rail system, there are they are problems, yes, but it's it's just cra- it's so much better. And you know, you just hop in, and then you know, you listen to the iPod. Twenty minutes later, you're there. Right. And it's quick. Yes. Um, you know, I, it's, the same in, in in Taiwan. In Taiwan, they have a great rail system. Yeah, although the one in Taiwan, they keep saying they're they're losing a lot of money on that one. So they might need to totally restructure the finance on on that end. Um, they probably do. Yeah. Right now, there is a high speed rail system in China, but that has a lot of problem too because of corruption, because yes. of uh, free, because of all the abuse and all that. So um, the technology itself, I. Th- I often what I have heard is sound. Everything is good, except some of the construction because of because of corruption, is kind of um, iffy. So some of the bridges are not built to code. So uh, there was actually one incident, um, and, and you know some of the management is bad. So there was actually one incident a year and a half ago that a, a train actually uh, didn't know there's a train in front of it and, and didn't stop. So it just hit hit the train in front of it and huge disaster. So that's another story. But hey, you know, so what did hey, what did you guys think about the Rubio response? Huh? Wait, hold on, hold on. Hey, before hey, hey. before okay, we talk ahead. before we talk about the Rubio response, anybody yes. else uh, about the uh, the State of the Union? And what you want to you want to say? Voting right, I think that's that's a wonderful moment. Oh, there. that was, yeah, awesome. that was a nice moment. Uh, Very yeah. overdue. The, yeah. uh, the one thing that I was really really PO'd about not being in there was any mention whatsoever about campaign reform, right. campaign finance reform. Yes, and that needs to be in there. You're right. exactly right. right. It does. Um, there is um, – oh, oh, uh, well, quickly going back to the voting right, um, there is a 102. Can you, can you imagine – even imagine – can you even imagine like 102 years old? Uh, 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 she's African-American woman. Yes. Can you imagine 80 years ago? What she went through, and can you even you, you think she even think like eighty years later she would be in um, the, uh, the, the 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 same situation right in the can you Congress her standing in line for all those hours and hours right. and hours thinking back to the first time she was legally able to cast a vote right right, right. and and you know. Can she? She cannot even imagine. Eighty years later, she would be sitting there, uh, lo- you know, listening to State of the Union address there, when an African American president is talking. Right. Can you yeah. even? I mean, that would just bring tears to my eyes just to think about that. Well, the whole thing did. For but, me. but but you know, was... but you know what? Guess what? Just Google it. We're not going to talk about it. You know, certain people on Fox News um, <laughs> said something about that. It's just awful. So yeah, they they ridiculed and just made fun of it. You know, the, why, why is this even? They say about? yeah. What's the big deal? Wow. Oh, I even <laughs> heard that she doesn't speak English. What? Yes. <laughs> Hello. Okay. I mean, they they uh, went after her every way they could. Right. It was it was. So, it was awful. So there are a lot of stuff. The I only mean, reason they did that was because our president dared to mention her. Right. right. Yes. Uh, so, and immigration in the same sense. Right, immigration. Uh, there are a lot of stuff that uh, that uh, we uh, on our side, progressive or liberals, 
I mean, although I do read stuff online, uh, some uh, progressives who are even on the left to us says, uh, you know, not a lot of very unkind things about the uh, the uh, the State of the Union, which is and the president, which are good discussion, I think. But you know, you're right? In, and in that's, general, and that's good. You're you're never you're never going to get all the purists, though. In general, we are cool with it, except. Yep. Let me let me talk about what I don't like about it. Just one thing. I am a little bit disappointed with the whole education approach. Um, I think the preschool thing is wonderful. That has yeah. to be done. Um, if you See, and that's where that, I have an go issue. back to the Rachel Maddow feature on that tonight. She did a wonderful job of of uh, highlighting how much of a return we get from yeah right. K from pre kindergarten, including Oklahoma, one of the most conservative states right. in the union, having the best pre kindergarten uh, program in the country. Right, you can't get yeah. redder than Oklahoma, right? Right. Yeah. But um, well, if you if you ask me, you know, I'm kind of in education, so. If you ask me, I, I think, you know, preschool, K through 12, uh, bachelor degree, even that whole process has to be free to the student. And, you know, and then once graduate school starts, that's another story. But, you know, if you ask me, I think if anybody want to go for it from, you know, preschool to Ph.D., the, whole, the entire process should be free. And we should we should be able to find some kind of money. Just, geez, cut a one weapon program that doesn't work the money is already there right. the returns but, on education are among the greatest greatest returns that you get back for the investment that you've made right but, yeah. but see here's just one thing that i don't like about uh the, the speech itself i have a problem with this little part here and actually the approach to education we have right now uh in this country as in uh, we put all seems to me we are putting all of our focuses on science and math, which in itself is fine, because science and math is the pillar of our of our civilization, right? Right. But but you know how 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 it is though. You know when you say okay, you have to focus everything on that front, then a lot of times the other stuff get left behind, which. It's kind of my stuff, right? You know, I I wish, okay, I wish he would say something like, you know, we have to really beef up our education in science and math. But at the same time, we also need to be leaders in, you know, all the other studies, as in, you know, social science and art and all the other uh, liberal studies and all the other stuff. I, he, I wish he would. In our day, we used to actually uh, have great, well-rounded educational programs right. at the elementary school. The in those days they were called junior high school right. and high school levels. Right. Uh, you know, ranging from everything from music and arts and the the of course the physical education. Those programs have all disappeared. Right. Right. He he. Speci- yeah. He specifically specifically mentioned that we have to be leaders in science and math. But I wish he would just add another thing and says we should be the leader. In uh, or we should be very good at all other aspects of education. Um, I I teach music. I I know how horrible the the status in in terms of music education in schools right now. I mean, there's no funding in it. You know, uh, teachers have to run around all over the place. You know, there's you know a lot of teachers have to run run like two or three schools just to make one job. We used to have, when my kids were in school, we actually used to have to do fundraisers to keep the, the band programs going. Right, right. I, you know, it's, it's, it's the same way right now. So I, I wish he would say that. Uh, we didn't. I, and, I, and I totally understand why we have to emphasize the, the science and the math part of it because, because when people think of competing with the world, that's what they think of right away. And because science and math do bring in money, so I, I understand why he has to say that, but I wish, you know, he would he would I go wish for the more would be right. some recognition um, for the humanities teaching critical thinking, right, right, and critical um, writing and yeah. thinking and, as and, well, which bleed over, by the way, into the other disciplines, right. Um, and of course, I'm speaking from my own bias here. The other thing I want to say is okay. Right. Um, I understand where he's coming from with the four-year-old thing. I understand that we have a lot of people in this country 
who are working two and three jobs. The kids are, you know, in, in daycare. They aren't in necessarily a place that's doing anything more than, than making sure everybody's fed and they get a little time yeah, they're, to play. Yeah, they're houses for kids. Right. right, right. And and I understand that. At the same time, I think sometimes we push our earliest citizens too hard into exactly what we're talking about here, um, right, the math and the science and stuff. That's true, too. Um, speaking as the grandmother of some children who are being um, educated alternatively, um, I'm, I'm just going to make the case for, okay, I don't think every four-year-old should be in preschool, but I think if you have kids who don't have the advantages, let's say, of my of my own grandchildren, then yeah, I I can see where we need to beef up programs for them because we well, have that's some exactly kids. Exactly what Obama was talking about. I'm He's sure it is. Providing those opportunities for kids who don't have access to exactly. resources in their their own families. Yeah, and, but I couldn't let that go without saying. That. Okay, one more thing for me. One hundred percent. Right, one more thing for me on this. Right, um, you know, remember he proposed this website that uh, parents and students can go in. To check colleges and to get to, I'm, I'm kind of, kind of quoting here to see if which college can uh, get the biggest bang for the buck. Did you do, do you guys remember he said that? Uh, I don't they, remember they, a lot about that. You know, there's a website that uh, I think I think uh, kids can go in and uh, they can. Uh, you know, check about colleges and you know which one is basically which one which one uh, you know worth their 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 money to go to college. Uh, I'm not sure if I like that idea because uh, you can you can't really think of education that way. I mean, you you just can't. That's, 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 school is good in in providing a uh, superior education in every every area either. Yeah. Uh, many, many schools specialize in certain disciplines. Right. Exactly. Right. So I, I don't know. I mean, yes, I understand why he has to do that because because they probably when they when they you know plan this out they need to have a thing that would it's a good talking point, good argument when somebody says, oh hey, you're Democrats, you don't know what you're talking about in terms of in terms of education, you're wasting a lot of taxpayers' money. And then he can, you know, um, present this thing. See, State of the Union, we talk about that. But I do think in long term, that's the wrong way to approach in terms of education. You can't, you can't, it's not, you can't really graph everything, uh, you know, you can't really balance everything on a spreadsheet. That's, that's not how education works, you know. You know, if you if you always want to talk about the profit, that, that's not how education should work, at least to me. So, well, that's the end of my spiel. So, uh, any 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 more thoughts on the State of the Union? We are at. There's, we're, there's a section on executive power, right? Right. In his speech, that got a little uh, pushback from HuffPo today, right? Um, and it's uh, the Obama administration's approach to targeted extrajudicial killings right. and their relative relative constitutionality, and it's. Obviously, we went over drones last, was it last week? Right, last we week. We went over drones. Right. Um, and I don't think we need to, to draw this out, but that is in the speech. Right. Um, and HuffPo has an interesting um, little take on that right. on their website today. Well, we're going to be dealing with this forever. You know, right. Trust me. Yeah, so, that's an, the ongoing. Right. Yeah. So if there are no more thoughts on the Sea of the Union, my gosh, we're already at 40 minutes. So, uh yeah, talk a little bit about the Rubio response. He's the savior of the Republican Party. Right, be, before, you what, if, before you hey. say that, Melvin, before you say that, can you take a drink of water, please? Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Mm, we'll wait. Uh, we'll let me wait. join you. We'll wait. We'll wait. Ah, <laughs> all of Romney's policies just add water. Right. You know, as I'm listening to this thing. All right, all right. <laughs> Someone's got a straw. Uh, who is I this? Sucker. I think that? that was Leo. <laughs> I've heard it pointed out quite a few times that anybody – now, if you guys remember, uh, Michelle Bachman has, has given uh, this and then uh, – yeah. oh, that guy, and Bobby Jindal's given the, uh, the response. Oh, Herman damn. Cain. Herman Cain has given the response. Nine, and, nine, hey, nine. hey, nine, nine, nine. And any time they give the response, um, they go down in flames. 
So yeah, it's I a think finger killer. Yeah. It is. It's 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 the kiss of death, and it well, was no different for him. And now here, so he kept drinking water during the damn thing. And so I flipped on conservative talk radio the next day, as I always love to do after these things come on. And they go, everybody missed the point of his speech because the liberal media is focusing on the fact that he's got a dry throat. My God, I've been talking all my life. You can't talk. He talked for 20 minutes before, and then he gave the, the response to this. Day. Who can talk for 25 minutes without taking a drink of water? Um, The president just did. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to exactly. – my, my good friend Mike Simmons uh, today was talking about this very thing, uh, talking about, I'll bet you can't tell me anything that was in the substance of the speech, but you can tell me about uh, the drink. In fact, uh, I think he said that uh, MSNBC uh, <laughs> yesterday had 109 references during their primetime uh, coverage or primetime programming. Yeah. Oh, so, I think Rachel Maddow just did an endless loop of him drinking water. It was, yeah. I yeah. used to work with Mike Fitzsimmons. You know what, Mr. Fitzsimmons? I could tell you what was in his speech. It's the same claptrap that's always in those speeches. Well, yeah. I think most of us can, can tell mo most uh, any uh, progressive that, or liberal that pays any attention at all can tell you that it was the same laundry list yes. of talking points yes. that they put out knowing that they're they can't possibly know what's in the speech before it is before it's out no low taxes well, no, more wait. freedom more they're guns. gonna throw a shotgun at it right. shot, uh, fire a shotgun and see what what hits wait right. wait okay call me wrong over here but i was in debate team when i was in high school you're wrong <laughs> there there was Oh, you're no, really not, not wrong. Good. Not wrong on that. Did you keep actually. your water bottle on the floor? No. Uh, no That's no. where his was. No, we, we, we drink hard liquor. But, you know, yeah. but uh, call me wrong, but isn't that the, the rebuttal is when you quickly in that five minutes, you, you, you write the rebuttal? You listen yeah. to what happened. Right. During the thing, and then the rebuttal is you use that five minutes or ten minutes when Brian Williams is talking. Uh, to to write the rebuttal itself, you're not supposed to have something prepared already. Well, exactly. you're you're supposed to have a template prepared, but you're supposed to adjust it accordingly as you hear the speech. So when he goes, the president just talked about more government. Actually, Obama specifically said we're not going for big government here. Right, right. So, and, and when he says Solyndra, I'm like, well, you just Google and cut and Linda? paste your response. Right? Yeah, there was yeah, no exactly. such no such reference made in the speech. So no. why why did we even bring it up? No, and Solyndra, well, Solyndra, substantiated talking points on Obamacare. That's yeah, no how kidding. We started. No, so like, you know, you guys what? know you guys know what Solyndra is, right? Of course. Well, of course, it's the it's the it's the uh, solar company that went under. Well, right, but, I mean, but that was, was that was done and done like be way before what the campaign. I hear anybody talk about is how many of those loans were given out, how many hundreds, actually thousands of those loans that were given out. Those companies are still in business today, right. employing right. tens of thousands of Americans right. at nice high wage jobs. And Solyndra yeah. is just the, Solyndra. Solyndra is the exception. Of the situation, right? But that's what they found. Right, but but it's see, a great talking. Point. But it's like it's like the Rubio people just just went, or the Republican, whatever. They just go to you know, oh hey, what is the uh, is the Mitt Romney website still up? Let's go there and pull <laughs> some stuff. Just talk to Sean Hannity, and he'll tell you what you're yeah. going to talk about. They they did this thing with Rubio that they that they did uh, with with Michael Steele, and that they did with Herman Cain. And they go, hey, you're brown. They'll listen to you. Go go go. You're not brown. But you're an alternative face, right? Yes. But, but the, uh, but the, uh, oh, you know, as as a minority male person, you know, I just, <laughs> I just, it just, this whole thing really kills me. As in, you know, guys like Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio and Bobby Jindal, it, it hurts. It really does hurt, because they trot these guys out. So obviously they so they're some kind of tokens. And so they just, obvious. They, and they they have them do stuff that it's like, I you know I actually do. Uh, this is going to sound funny, but um, sometimes I do feel kind of uh, bad for guys like Rubio <laughs> because I don't know what he really is thinking. But you know, but sometimes like they got they got to be some some element in that thing that he he personally doesn't really believe in. But he has to do it because of career, whatever. Right. But you know, I mean, so obviously, so badly, so horribly done that speech, as in so. Obviously, they just pull stuff together before, even before the speech. And well, like so the just government can't control the weather. Right. 
cuts that were Obama's idea in the first place. Uh, yeah. I mean, I just started writing these questions down, like, where did he get this? Right. Where and, did he get this? Uh, my, it, it's my bad. I forgot. Did he use the word social? Oh, social. Did he use the word socialism? No? I don't remember. Uh, I don't think he did. I don't recall hearing it, actually. But, but he, I don't either. He probably said something that is re- really close to that, right? You know, we, we have heard that before in the Romney campaign. Well, right. You always hear President. something in the talking points. Of, if you don't hear socialism, you all, all, always hear something about government control. over right, 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 right. That, that. And big you know government. what? He actually, yeah, uh, proposed a big government, whatever. And he actually used the word assimilate. I heard that one, and I, 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 I jumped, and, and I, and I go, wait a minute, what, That's what in the hell did he just say? I, it, I jumped, I jumped because assimilation is such an ancient idea of yes. what America is all about now. That, that idea is still running around, but it really show how backward thinking they are, how really show how out of touch they are in terms of immigration and in terms of what America is all about. Because assimilation is a is an old idea. It's a colonial idea. You know? Yeah. And, and it's not and a they, colonial idea. It's Star Trek. They, yeah, they, they, they assimilate you, right? <laughs> and, and, so, and so when exactly. he says, well, and he says, he says, he says, Obama, I still live in the same middle class house right. in in the suburb that I grew up in. It took maybe five seconds before that step, before that caught fire, and there were stories everywhere right. showing the listing for his house, yes. which is for sale, six hundred seventy-five thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, which the, which bothered, nice middle class house. Wait, sorry, Leo. Right, Le- bothered to uh, uh, make the point or to state that his his net worth is well over a million bucks. Right. Yep, just like a good middle class family. Yeah, you so, got it. So, you know, that speech is, I mean, I um, i don't know if it's a, it is actually a blessing that the water thing will go down in history as, you know, it's going to be like the bottle of water and it's binders of women, you know, one of these things that will yeah. just define a thing. And sure. he really <laughs> paid very little attention to immigration. This uh, was on HuffPo this morning. No. Um, the one thing he said was we can also help our economy grow if we have a legal immigration system that allows us to attract and assimilate the world's best and brightest. Yeah. That exactly. could have been taken works. right out of the State of the Union address. Yeah. That's even, exactly what Obama even with, did. Exactly that same point. Yes. Yeah. Even without the water thing, it really wasn't a good, it wasn't groundbreaking, it didn't yeah. bring up any new ideas, it didn't, you know, this was... He just two years ago he was in he was in the Florida uh, uh, Senate or so Florida House I can't remember which one he was in he's he, he's only been in the in the U S Senate for for two years now uh, this was supposed to be his big introduction they've been talking about Rubio for president right. like way back when he was working oh. in Florida they go Rubio for president so this was supposed to be his big moment getting up on the stage and going look at me I'm presidential fell flat you know what no that's like you know what guys run him that's the next it, George Bush because he can't even talk he's like Jin Dao, you know totally just racked everything yeah, you know, that, well, and then they go, okay, no, we got this brown guy, Jindal, go, and then Jindal right. falls flat on his and, face. And and, goes, okay, Where are we gonna find another brown guy. Well, there, there are, there are, uh, there are a lot. Kate. Well, there are a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, you can read about okay. Rubio. I, I read a bunch of it last night. Uh, that he, when he was in the Florida Senate, I believe, uh, there are a lot of funky things going on. Yes, uh, as in, you know, his his office actually hired his wife to do the something. Pack. Right? The super pack. But yeah. that's, we're not gonna go into that. Just read about it. Um, but what I want to bring up is, you know, MSNBC has uh, Julian Castro on, uh, right? Julian Castro is the, uh, the, uh, the mayor of San Antonio. Oh, yes, on, yes, right yes. After, as, the, uh, as the MSNBC rebuttal of the Republican rebuttal. <laughs> and uh, oh, Julian Castro, I mean, I, I you know, he, I, I'm, I'm have a feeling that, you know, we're going to hear from him uh, in the future. This guy, just compared to Rubio, is so much more articulate. You know, I liked I liked his speech I mean, at the DNC. I thought it was oh. I, I thought it was really good. Yeah, and I watched the whole the whole D, the, uh, DNC. Yeah, and you know, I, I have a feeling that you know, I mean, uh, well, first of all, I mean, somebody got to run against you know these two clowns from uh, the, the senators from Texas, you know, Ted Cruz and the other guy. Oh yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, you know, run from Minnesota to get that Michelle lady out of there. Uh, you know, I, I actually gave, I, I, I didn't give, I don't remember, but you know, there was like three years ago when somebody's running against her, 
Um, I actually, you know, like the other guy on Facebook and everything. I don't remember if I actually. Um, hmm, I don't remember. I have to check back. I but, can't remember his name, but I did donate. Yeah. Good so, on you. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So uh, Rubio. Oh my God. So what can I say there? something about Paul Ryan? Please. Please. Oh, please. Paul Ryan. <laughs> okay. This this just amazed me, and this is again off Huffington Post. Right. Paul Ryan had rare words of praise for Barack Obama's message on immigration. <laughs> I thought on comprehensive immigration reform, I thought his words were measured, Ryan said. This is faint praise. Yeah, I think the tone and the words he took were productive on that front. I'm going to hold Paul Ryan to those words. Well, yeah. you know, it's, no wonder it's so warm here. Hell's freezing over. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe he's learned you don't want to mess with this administration. You know, or or any, the Biden will come after you man, again. Any, any praise coming from Paul Ryan that might hurt. Actually, now, more. now we have to now we have to qualify this by saying he did spend a couple of months listening to Romney talk all day, so he's probably just glad to hear somebody who can finish a. No, set. no, no! It's Romney Ryan, Romney Ryan, Romney Ryan, Romney. Yeah, he's so. got a hey. No, your chance should say this. I'm running for president. They go, no, we're running for you know the little monster kid. Right, and, and you know they are when they were when the president was talking about equal paid, equal paid. Yeah. And they mm -hmm. pan the camera over to Ryan. Dude, it's not like uh, just having this, like, you know, like demonic smile on his face. Yeah. Oh. So, gosh, you know. <laughs> well, of course. And, and the one thing that, that President Obama brought up in that State of the Union that immediately got attacked the following day right. was increasing the minimum wage. Right. Oh, yeah. Heaven oh. forbid. Gosh. You know, nine dollars. Talking point, you're gonna kill jobs. Yeah. Yes. That same crap. <laughs> yeah. And, and, never, and never... the president has laid out that if, if at the present rate people make fourteen thousand tell me where in this country you can live on fourteen thousand dollars. Nowhere. Well, Nowhere. What, they, they, what they refuse to tell you too is that if people are making more money, they're gonna spend more money mm -hmm. and stimulated economy. Right. I think, you know, the trick the whole trickle down thing. It's it's so it's so debunked at this point. Uh, it's just crazy that they keep trotting that out. I mean, you, if you inject money into you know the, the the low end of the economic spectrum, people is going to spend the money right away. You know, I want to. Uh, yeah, I want to. I want to. It goes back to what you know our previous president says. You just got to keep catapulting the propaganda. Yeah. Oh, oh. On that. Want, on that. Let me. Let me. Oh, let, 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 let me just bring one. One more thought into the Rubio response. It, it's. It's almost seems to me that. Well, okay. Yes, it's canned. I'm not. I don't think they. 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 I don't think they actually want to do the instant rebuttal thing. So right. they have something prepared. Uh, for him to just, you know, be a talking head and start drinking water in uh, national TV. But there's also this thing that I think is how the Republican Party or, you know, let's not all partisan on this, the other side, that's how they're going to operate. As in whatever we say, whatever the president say, whatever our people on our side say, they're just going to ignore what we say and just, you know, just lay out their talking points mm -hmm. like, like, you know, like nothing happened. And and hopefully they will catch that you know forty nine percent you know the the people the, the percentage of voter for Romney that they would just make them happy by just telling them what what they want to hear and they just ram ram that uh, same talking points over disregarding what actually was said. I think that's how they're going to operate from this point. I would so, like yeah they've done that in the past and and the other thing that that does is it gives. Fox News, their prepared text for the next day. They don't have yeah. to do any editing or anything. They just Makes put sense. it up and say, okay, snippet, 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 snippet. This may all make sense. Done. Exactly. So, okay. it, yeah. I want, I, I, want to move in, I want to move into the next point, but I, want, I don't want to get too far away from what you guys were talking about earlier right. with, with people having more money to spend. And, and see, most, most people, certainly, uh, certainly middle and lower class people, spend 100% of the money they take in generally. And the wealthy, I mean, obviously do not do that. Now, if we start giving more money to middle and lower class people, it's going to stimulate the economy, which is going to look good for Obama. Right. And I want to dovetail this into the Hegel filibuster. The Hegel yes. filibuster has absolutely nothing to do with the fact 
that that nobody likes Hegel. Hegel's a Republican. He's a decorated veteran. He was he used to be John McCain's best friend. Actually, re, actually helped run John McCain's uh, campaign. But the whole thing now is is they can't let Obama have anything. So I think that Hegel, uh, which by the way. The filibuster is brought to us courtesy of Harry Reid, who makes me sick because he came out uh, right. Away, you know, he came out right away and he goes, "How dare they do this? They shook my hand." I mean, those are my words. He goes, "How could they?" He goes, "How could they?" He goes, "How could they?" It's a gentleman's agreement, but I'm sorry, there, uh, Harry, yeah. you're not dealing with gentlemen. No, no you're not. Goes, how could they? How could they filibuster? Well, they're filibustering because Obama picked him. Right. They're not going to like anybody that you he know, picked. You I, know, I, to that I say, Harry, fool me once, shame on. Fool me, you can't fool me again. You know what? We, I, I know that nobody jumped on my idea, but we should have called him. I know, I know his office isn't over right now, but we should have called him, left a voicemail or something, and just, and just everybody should call Harry Reid and say you. Ugh, I, you know, I mean, I, I, I've, I've had, I've had, I've always had kind of a kind of a love not so love relationship with with harry reed but right now i i am so furious i don't even know if i'd be able to restrain myself if i, I got mean, with can, him, like a city block of him uh, can we have i you know i i agree i'm so tired of this just soft approach on everything can we can we please have another majority leader maybe somebody like a, a clover cha or or, yeah. or 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 barbara boxer or I don't some, know. Somebody I don't who, know. I don't how know. about Al Franken? <laughs> I don't know why they think he's such a great leader. He right. came out so strong. He goes, you know what? This filibuster stuff, this is crap. We're not going to let this happen anymore. He gave multiple, interview, he, multiple interviews, and he goes, hey, the most important thing is for us to change the filibuster rule so these guys can't do this. And then the filibuster things come c- comes up, and he folds like a cheap suit. Who that? Who picked this guy to be the leader? Well, you know, I wanna, I, I'm, I guess that they this keep is picking him to be the leader. Well, I, I guess, the I, I guess one of these inside the beltway, you know, who knows what, and you know, who's 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 always in the game kind of thing. But you know, He's I'm gonna have the phone numbers, pictures somewhere. <laughs> I think, I think, I think eventually Hagel is going to get the job, but but of course the the Southern Mail. Of the United States Senate, Lindsey Graham says, "I need I need to have more information on Benghazi before I am going to give him an opportunity." Well, which has I mean, nothing. This well, has nothing to do yeah, with anything. Well, nothing to do with Benghazi. Okay. Well, so you know, you know that yeah. subject up. Well, you know what? You know what? Let's go back to what I just said five minutes ago. I think the Benghazi thing is another one of these things that, Crap. however, however, whatever, whatever evidence going to be presented, it doesn't matter. They're just going to spill their line. Even they, they, they're not going to stop until the president admit that, yes, Benghazi is actually, you know, the Breen and the Romulans got together and attacked Benghazi. They, you know, they, they're not <laughs> they're, they're not going to be satisfied until they're just not going to be satisfied. To open up Area 53 and we all know that's a can of worms. Right. Because, because, because <laughs> they, they, just, they just Benghazi at this point is just like it's, it's just a political thing. Kevin, there's no yeah. there's there's no actual answer here that Kevin, we're satisfied Kevin, it Kevin, it's an intelligence failure and they need to hold the Obama administration accountable for this intelligence failure because that's what Republicans do whenever there is an intelligence failure except for a nine eleven. Well, uh, <laughs> what about the, all the, the dozens of attacks that took place on, on Bush's watch and on, exactly. Exactly. on, on the, the first Bush's watch and the, the, the dozens, I think that's close to 100 Americans that were killed in those attacks. Not, not a single not hearing. hearing was ever held on any of those. Right. Nothing. Not to mention Iran-Contra. Right. Well, we, yeah, we, hello. Well, we did have we did have hearings on the Iran, Iran Contra thing. Yes. I remember, I remember. But, but now Ollie there North was whole thing Fox when News. those people like those hostages got got released. Right? Right, right. How interesting was that? You know. Still don't know this. You story. know what? I want to know more about Watergate. To tell you the truth. Yeah. <laughs> We need to hold, we need to hold some hearings on Watergate. We need to just write this. You know, we can find crap too. Yeah. And Agnew are both gone. Uh, Talk about the grassy knoll. Yeah. So the yeah the Hegel thing. It's just and, and you know uh, there, I just uh, saw a report earlier today with uh, Clara McCaskill. 
Oh, that would be a good Senate my majority leader right there. There you go. Claire, Claire, Claire McCaskill uh, came out and says uh, she expects there will be enough votes to confirm Hegel next week. But Wait, then it's one. It's then we have to run a week without a Secretary of Defense. You guys, you know, I want to party that, that oh, keeps touting themselves as being the party of uh, security, uh, national security. Why, how can they possibly allow? The Department of Defense to operate without a leader. I mean, come right, on, right. folks. And, and you know, with with a you know, and the, the nominee is a it's a Vietnam veteran. And, he's a decorated war hero, and right. he's also been endorsed by Colin Powell, which of course we all know all the Republicans have oh. disenfranchised. Yeah. He's been in, endorsed by Condoleezza Rice, who is still one of them. Right. So this is this is totally crazy, and you know, I mean. I am. I actually, you know what? I, we we won't know this until maybe even the la, the next uh, presidential presidential election. But I'm wondering if the Republican Party right now is actually signing their. Um, it's horrible to say, but signing their own death warrants right now. Well, they're because, trying because, to because, because now, package themselves. Now, because because Rubio's response is only one of the two responses, right? There's another one by Rand Paul. Rand Paul. That, the, that, tea, the teabagger response, which right. is not even worth talking so about. So there's a schism. There's, all, there's so obvious there's a huge schism between the Republican Party itself. Well, you and, know you got a problem when the, the, when the party, party uh, faithful are uh, battling against uh, Karl Rove. Yes. Right, right, right. And, you know. Gosh. Hey, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna transition into some, into a little bit of good news. I've got, I've got a real short one here that I wanted to, I just want to give an update on, ahead. Uh, that, ahead, that I believe that, I believe that we've covered before. And I, and I, and then I want to go ahead and I want to hand off to Leo, cause Leo's got some good news as well. Now, uh, most everyone's heard about what happened with Sweet Cakes over here in Portland, Oregon. Right. And, uh, uh you know, a, a gay couple went in, they said, we need a cake made. And, and the, the Christian owner says, absolutely not. We're not going, we're not going to let you do that now. So right, so right away when this happened, it, it, it broke here in Portland, which drew them all kinds of ire from, from the local community, because obviously Portland is very, very liberal. However, their business went through the roof because homophobes from all over the city <laughs> finally have a place to get their cake. Now, hold on. <laughs> but but what they're doing is illegal here in the state of Oregon. Right, right. They they are now facing a fifty thousand dollar fine from the state of Oregon, and the Obama Justice Department is also looking into it. Plus, and by the way, you'll have to forgive me because I don't watch reality TV. But in the wake of the incident, uh, Baltimore-based uh, pastry chef and Ace of Cake star Duff Goldman is sending uh, sending out an offer to the couple, saying he would like to make a cake for them wow. and offer it to them free of charge right. and it's probably going to wind up in the show which is just great so it's shining even more light on their struggle plus uh this homophobic bakery is gonna ha is, is having to pay the one fine almost for sure and the federal government's going to come down on them too because this is this is a discrimination case so yeah, this is something that started as bad and of course they're getting support from the homophobic community but it's it's really it, 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 this story is turning out to be, you know, pretty entertaining, and it uh, it shows the the new civil rights struggle that we're dealing with right now with our with our gay brothers and sisters. And and big ups to to Duff Goldman. That's a badass name, by the way. And, yeah, there you go. Well, yeah. the only reality TV I, I watch is Breaking Bad. But you know, oh. <laughs> but that's pretty real. <laughs> I I don't understand. Pretty you know, freaking. Real. I I I can I can try to understand, but you know, I don't know if I want to. In, somebody come in. You you're probably very good at making wedding cakes. Somebody comes in. We have a wedding. Why don't you just enjoy it with them and make them the cake instead of just spilling hate? And I mean hate. I mean it you, is hate. You, you can cover that up with well, know, it's religion. Gotta be hate. I mean, you, they're they're paying you to make a cake, and we all know that uh, they make a ton of money off every cake they make. No, so I, it's gotta be hate. Right. Money, money right. isn't money isn't gay or straight. They don't say here's my gay money and it's printed on you know floral paper or whatever. I mean, it money's money. I mean, just <laughs> take the damn money and make the cake. Uh, you know, it, yeah, but, you know, I just don't understand sometimes how these people operate because just can you just 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 feel happy for these people uh, instead of like dragging out you know the whatever. And a lot of times, I mean, this guy. You know, I, you know, it's like, it's what I believe in. You know, is there a chance that what you believe in is kind of not, you know, 
good. I don't get it. But, but I guess I come from a family where there are several people on either side right. of the family right. who have yeah. been married multiple times. Yeah. Right. And I have to say, well, the heterosexuals aren't doing a whole lot for marriage. You know what? I you think look at that- some of these couples, like, you know, we had, uh, uh, who was the guy that played Spock? Uh, Leonard Nimoy. Leonard. Yeah, he came, he came here to Washington to get married to his partner who he's been with for decades. Wait, yes. wait, wait, hold not, on. N- Nimoy? I did not Nimoy. know Nimoy. All this time. Not Nimoy. No, 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 no. George Takei. Oh, George, George Takei. Takei. Yeah, right, right. Oh, George okay, Takei. right. George Takei. Yeah, oh, I love him, by the way. Okay, I so, thought you, uh, man, very, I thought you, I, I'm very intelligent. <laughs> I thought, yeah. you know what, Yo, Leo, you, you scare me there, not because of anything, but I thought I know everything I need to know about Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not that, well, hey, so, so, not so that there's anything wrong with it, but you guys know. So uh, reeled me back in here. Right, right. So the, the civil rights struggle, uh, our gay brothers and sisters, um, Leo, I would, I would, I'd love to hand this off to you, brother. Well, you know, I'm glad that you <clears throat> used that segue, uh, as, uh, 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 uh and equal rights, because that's exactly what this is. That's a, that's a, you know, that, that, I, I lived yeah. through the through the civil rights era back in the marches and all that. I had had because I never myself went to the south, but I had cousins actually who I respected very much who went to the south and marched with Dr. King and and uh, were actually new Medgar Evers and some of these people. Wow. Yeah. This this is actually an extension. Of of that same battle, it's never ended, uh, and it's it's about time that it ends right here. Right. Uh, Leon Panetta went a long way to doing that when he declared uh, uh, new benefits for our uh, our active duty military and retired military. Right. Uh, when he started saying that uh, they that their 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 partners can now be qualified to get notified if they get killed in battle. I mean, come on, right. folks. They're How not inhuman. Can you get that you won't notify somebody that their their loved one is dead? Oh. Right, right. They're I mean, not they're not special rights. They're equal rights. It's it's the same you know, it's and it's 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 human. It's a very human thing. It, it should have always been you know, I'd like to say at least we're moving in that direction, but my goodness, I mean, even it's like something as as simple as that, just letting them know that a loved one died. Like, who can whether it's their son or their their wife or their what? I mean, it's a loved one, just the same. You know, so give them visitation rights in the hospital, survivors benefits. They they, they weren't even uh, able to list them as a survivor before. Right. Nope. I mean, this is just this is barbaric. Right. It's completely barbaric. Um, that's you know, a good. That's a good word. I, I you know, I uh, Leo. Do you remember uh, a an army captain named uh, Keith Meinho? It sounds familiar. This is like twenty years ago. About twenty years ago, he's a he's a gay person, and he I believe he served in the first Gulf War, and he's gay. And I think they're going to like dishonorable discharge him. What? Uh, this is 20 years ago. I probably it, it just came to mind, uh, you know that. And then and then there was a, I, I know I remember there was a huge, uh, you know there, there was a huge news report on, on on him. So we can you know we we probably can talk about that when when this coming week that, that we can do a little research. But I you know when you talk about uh, what you just talked about you know extending benefit and all that to a same sex couple. Um, there are a lot of horrible things that are going on in the world. You know, North Korea is, you know, just bubbling with, like, craziness again. But there are also a lot of hope. There are a lot of things that are going right. And this is one of those things. Because I think we came a long way in the past 20 years on this. Now, you can argue we that, yeah. Way, but we, we still have so exactly. much further to go. Exactly. I mean, that we, yeah, you can argue that. You can argue that, you know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, with the progress is too slow. And I do agree with that, too. But you know, I mean, and 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 uh, a state of Colorado, uh, they just passed a, uh, uh, you know, a uh, uh, domestic partnership thing yesterday, uh, which is you know not what we in the state of Washington has. Go Washington! But uh, oh, but at least it's it's a good uh, forward step, and the state of Illinois Senate today passed the 
gay marriage uh, bill too. So they're going to well, so they're going to have that. So uh, you, you know, know, so there there are a, there are a lot of, also a lot of hopes and a lot of good yeah. things going on. And you know, I think I think uh, you well, know this, this is one of the problems with our the, as far as and this is a, a maybe another tangent, but one of the problems with the media that uh, over the last couple of decades is they're so focused on all the negative things that are happening that we don't actually know the positive things that are, that are being accomplished in this country and in, in the world at large. Right. Right. There is a section on HuffPo called Good News, and I click on it with some regularity. Right. Uh, my dad, who sounds like he is, he is of your generation, Leo. My dad and I are, are absolutely opposed to one another when it comes to politics. We don't agree on anything. My dad is a conservative, uh, Catholic, but my, but my dad came to me and he goes, What's with the whole gay thing? I don't see the problem. So, <laughs> like, well, yeah, and I go, hey, he goes, yeah, he goes, I really don't care about that. I just want, I just want taxes cut, and you know, I, I want this and that privatized, and I don't really care about the whole gay thing. Let them do whatever they want to each other. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, well, yeah. hey, you know, it's Rachel made a good point. She goes, they're called rights. Right. You're not supposed to yes. vote on them. They're rights, and you don't like put the right the rights to vote. Right. You don't put the rights, and especially with the rights of minorities, and, you know, they are a minority. You don't put the rights of minorities up to the majority. I mean, that's how you wind up with things like slavery. Right. Exactly. You know, that's how you wind up with things like refusing to pass the Violence Against Women Act. Right. I mean, that, oh. that's civil rights right there. Right. Right. Which Rubio voted against, by the way. Yeah. Oh, he's such a charmer. Oh, I just uh, – uh, thank you, Wikipedia, Keith Meinho. Uh, he is a veteran of the U.S. Navy who successfully challenged the Navy's attempt to Navy, sorry, to discharge him for coming out as gay in 1992 and ended his uh, Navy career in 1996. Well, that's the, but yeah, I remember this thing uh, in the early 90s. That, yeah, that uh, does ring a bell for sure. It seems to me there was another guy that was from Seattle area. Yeah, that was uh, an, an Army guy who did the same thing. Yeah, they're they're pro- yeah, you know, they're so. You know, so so many people have to go through so much hell, you know, because of because of this, because of just plain old bigotry, you know. And it's about time we are moving in the right direction. I don't know. Somebody is actually suggesting that the president move on a federal, um, some something on the federal level on uh, gay marriage. You know, he he, I, he he probably won't because they're already calling him a dictator. So, you know, and, and I don't think he sh- I don't think he should be bothered by anything that they say or do because, look, you're not facing re-election. And I love that fact because I, I feel like so many things he did to try to please the teabaggers, which, by the way, never, ever please the teabaggers. Yeah. They just oh, don't yeah. they they about. So many things he did doing, during his first administration that, that didn't work. I mean, may, hopefully now he'll say, you know, who cares what you guys think? I'm going to, you know. Hey, hey, I'm going to stop discriminating. What do you think about that? Right. Oh, that's, that's going to get oh, it's going to get them all in a tizzy. Go on his own is is what he's already done. Is just told his uh, Justice Department, you know, Defense of Marriage Act. No, we're not. No. We're not going to yeah. defend yes. that. We're, forget about it. Right. Yeah. That's about don't don't seeking... defend DOMA. Yeah. So well, and he actually came out um, uh, environmental causes in his in his State of the Union. Right. He said, yep. "Send me something to sign." Yeah. Or, or I'll take executive action. Which yeah. I there are some things you can do on, on that front. Right. Yes, right, right. So, you know, I mean, it, we, I, I am really, uh, I have a lot of hope in this front. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I do have a lot of friends who are LGBTQ, uh, and um, you know, I mean, it's very interesting because I think the military uh, aspect of this, um, they didn't. Um, it, it's, uh, it's still. As I understand it, it's still a little bit limiting right now. It's not, um, you know, it's not the whole spectrum of benefits that uh, uh, well, yeah, uh, they, heterosexual they, they, they uh, couples. I, I forget yeah. where I read it, but there are, are like 400 other benefits that right. weren't even addressed. Right. So it's not the entire thing. And I look forward to the day that, you know, there is no difference 
it, between. It, it, is, it is an absolute step in, in the in the right direction, and it's 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 been coming for a long time. And this is certainly something that was never going to happen under Bush, and it wasn't going to happen under Clinton because he signed DOMA, and then before that, it wasn't even on any on anybody's radar. Uh, exactly. Our, our gay brothers and sisters were were just were just marginalized. Well, there's not that really. There's not that many of them. They don't really want to get married. What do I care? I get to get married, and so I now I mean the, 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 the timing is right. LGBT people in this country than there are NRA members. And yet <laughs> yes, they there are. Exert so much more control over so many aspects of everything that comes out of Washington. That's a this is just wrong. Constituency. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, um, you know, coming from somebody like me who has uh, ties in um, <laughs> in all over the world and the universe, um, I have to say, I, I hope. America would take a more leading role on this uh, because, you know, I mean, I, I, Hong Kong is having somewhat of, of the same fight right now for LGBTQ, um, you know, brothers and sisters. Yeah. And I hope, I, and, you know, I'm sure this, um, you know, the state of Washington, go Washington, yes. uh, and, go uh, Washington. The, you know, the gay marriage um, or, or same-sex marriage or marriage equality. Let's 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 actually call it what it is. Marriage equality. Uh, it's you know that that is just rolling in you know in into states after states after days states. This development uh, give them a lot of encouragement in this fight, and I hope more states actually um, you know will come through for for us. You know, I mean. Uh, you know, <laughs> well, the, the Republicans um, keep telling us that this needs to be a states' rights issue. Well, the states are coming around and starting to say, except for you know, of course, the solid South and the, the very conservative states. Right. Uh, even the more moderate states are beginning to come around and say, "This is an idea whose time has passed, right. and let's just get this done and be and move on." Uh, yeah, I want to. I, I want to. I want to finish up uh, yeah. this subject, if I, if I may, by saying. Uh, today, Valentine's Day, they were taping this show. Uh, the Human Rights Campaign of Oregon is, is started working today to get uh, uh, gay marriage back on the ballot, and they're they're gonna they're gonna word it, you know, more like the uh, more like the Washington law, and yeah. and they they expect it to pass because they're they're doing constant polling on this. What's what's stopping it in Oregon is you know uh, Eastern Oregon and Western Oregon are split like Eastern Washington and Western Washington. Yeah. Tell us about it. A lot like Washington. Obviously over here. Portland is very, very liberal, but you go to the other side of the state and it's like Kentucky. So, but it's, it's now, it's now, it's now pulling, it's now pulling high enough that they are now working to get it on the ballot here right. in Oregon. So, right. hey, hey, this progressive train just keeps rolling along. Right. I think, I think Oregon, Oregon, uh, if we get Oregon, and then after that, if we get California, California is going to be a be, uh, tough one because there's yeah, so many already passed large it conservative, it right? Uh, Prop eight, I believe. Uh, yeah. But you know, you know, if you if you talk to the people down there, though, I mean, they they would tell you that Prop Eight uh, got passed because of really some trickery on the other side. Oh, lots of it, lots of it, lots of so, outside money, and, lots right. of good money. Uh, yeah. The 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 the, the that Mormon per, Church. That, yeah, see, you said it. I wasn't going to name it, the but you know. Mormon <laughs> Church. <laughs> so said it. Well, you know what. Uh, Man. Let's move on to our DMs. Oh my God, it's already like seventy-eight minutes. So let's get crazy. Okay, so uh, or not? Go Dance. right. So uh, the uh, dishonorable mentions for this week, uh, Leo. You want to go first? Yeah, uh, we uh, probably all remember uh, Joe Walsh. Yeah. Well, this guy, while he was uh, serving, uh, was found to be uh, an absentee dad who was not paying his child support. And since he's now been diselected after trying to defame uh, his opponent, I believe it was uh, Tammy Baldwin, yeah. uh, who beat the pants off of him. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's, there's a story for you. Uh, anyway, uh, he has now filed suit to have all of his obligations for child support dismissed, not just reduced because he's unemployed, but dismissed from now until eternity. Oh, man. So he's a personal responsibility advocate uh, bailing out on his own child. This, Total you know, family <laughs> values, guys. Yeah, you know what? To that, I was, I, Only family values if you're right. a woman. To that, I would say, Joe Walsh, how is that uh, family value thing you're working for you? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh. And on to the next one. Okay, so I'll take this one. Uh, I, my dishonorable mention needs to go to Indiana teacher. Uh, who 
Her name is Deanna Madley. Uh, she is、um, one that、um, got together with a bunch of、uh, people within、uh, her own、uh, district and try to have a separate. Try to say that they need to have a separate prom for uh, LGBT uh, teenagers in the school. And、um, you can go ahead and go. I'm not going to say too much about her because I don't want to. I just want to DM this, but this honorably mentioned her. But her own spiel is the same thing. You know, hate the sin, not the not the haters. My belief、uh, tell tell me that you know、uh, I need to oppose this and blah 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 blah. You know what? Guess what,、uh, Miss Medley?、Um, I I I、uh, I hate bigotry. And I don't like bigots, so、yeah. sorry. No, 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 no soup for you. No soup. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of people trying to use this quote unquote their belief thing to be bigots and discriminate and you know others. It's a, it's a human rights issue. It, it you know, it, it's, it's, yeah. So enough. As if、me. high school isn't a hard enough time. Yes, exactly. There you go. So, and, and you know, I mean, we we know all kinds of bullying that is going on within within schools、uh, on uh, LGBT uh, teenagers. You know, enough is enough. You know, I mean, we、yeah. can we can we can lay we can you know when when later when we can get get into this whole argument about you know religion and what religion what what religion. Should stop at in terms of you know、uh, being bigots and limiting other people's rights, but that's a separate discussion. But I'm tired of I'm tired of people using this as an excuse to discriminate other people. So hey, that's my DM. On to the next one, and it comes from from me.、Uh, let's talk Steve Stockman, <laughs> Republican congressman from Texas, who thought that it would be a- not, not Texas again. Uh, bang, he thought it'd be a bang-up idea to bring Ted Nugent to the State of the Union、oh. speech. He, he said Ted Nugent is very articulate and will provide balance to Obama in the State of the Union. Now you may remember right around this time last year, it was Nugent who said if Obama gets reelected, I will be dead or in jail. Of course, he got a he got a visit from the Secret Service about that, and nobody really knows what he meant when he said that. But here's here's the thing: I did a little. I did a little research on Stockman. Now, Stockman represents Jasper County down in Texas, and I'm going to try to jog everyone's memories here. There was a back in、uh, '98. There was a dragging death of a black man. Does anyone remember that? Oh my God!、Uh, it was on NPR. That that happened in Jasper County. Now,、oh, what、yeah. happened was now there was a there was a there was a black guy that lived in the county, and he was walking home at about 2:30 in the morning. Uh, and Lawrence Russell, along with a buddy of his, decided to chain this man to the back of a truck and drag him for miles. When his body was initially found, it was nothing more than a pulp, and police thought that it was an animal until they went up the road and they found an arm, and they found a leg, and they found a head. This happened in Jasper County. Now I say this because Jasper County has a huge white supremacist. Uh, a lot of white supremacists live up there, including they've including the KKK, and these are the people that he that he represents. And he thought it'd just be a wonderful idea to bring Mr. Nugent to the to the State of the Union. Now, of course, State of the Union went off without a hitch, and you know they checked out Mr. Nugent, made sure he didn't have any guns. But really, it was just contempt for the president. That's all it was. It was him making a statement because the minute he announced he's bringing the Nuge, it caught fire, and for obvious reasons because. In an indirect way, he threatened the president's life. You can't, you can't talk to you know these congressmen from、yeah. Texas for sure. I right, think he was a little bit more than indirect, Melvin. There was yeah, a statement yeah, made about a machine gun.、Yeah. Yeah, I mean, suck、yeah. this. So, yeah. So yes, to, yes, suck to, my machine gun,、uh, Obama. He's not articulate. I don't know how he,、right. how Stockman even used that word. If, if, if I may say. On to the next one.、Uh, no, wait. Well, to the listeners who are wondering about Stockman before you go away, and that—that's that by inviting、uh, Mr. Nugent, he has reassured his election back for another term. <laughs> that's a, I,、uh, that's sad. Well, okay. Wait for for the listeners. For, for our listeners who are wondering,、uh, the the person who got murdered、uh, back in 1998, his name is James Bird. Yes.、Uh, and, uh, James B B Y R D. I just Google and I read about it. 
Yeah, really I, awesome. I actually do remember this. And, and if I and if I may, uh, the guy the guy who 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 drug him to his death was executed yes. a number a number of years ago. And when they asked him, because of course they did the lethal injection, they asked him when he was on the table before they injected him, and, and they said, "Do you, you know? Do you have any final words?" And he he says, and I quote, "No." I have no final statement, and there was actually a tear in his eye. It's remorse on your deathbed. It's remorse finally, but it's too little too late. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, this is his last word. Should, oh. I even, should I even say this? That's pretty <laughs> awful. As far as I'm quoting this guy, uh, yes. Lawrence Russell Brewer. Yes. As far as any regrets, no. I have no regrets. No, I'd do it all over again, to tell you the truth. Ugh. And this is a murderer, so. Oh, yeah. And uh, gosh, okay. Miss Angela. Yes. GM, I'm going to spin right off of Melvin's, and I'm going to take on the fourth estate, which is journalism in this country. And the reason I'm going to take them on is exactly the person that you brought up going to the State of the Union address, Ted Nugent. There was so much media attention to this. And one of the things that I want to point out about somebody like Ted Nugent is that he is how do I say this? He's a media slut. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't think there's any other way I can say out? it. What's that? Are you going to beep that out? Are you going to beep that out, Kevin? <laughs> I don't no, know. No, no, hey, hey, no, no. That's not a customer. No. I agree 100%. Rush no, Limbaugh man. uses it. Yeah. She didn't um, say it's a media C word. And, Come on. and mine was actually well learned okay because honestly it gets ratings it gets attention and and everybody's tuning in to see what you're going to say about it okay um the fourth estate journalism in this country has a responsibility to all of us and i'm going to hold them responsible and i'm also going to light a fire under all of our feet as well because we buy in to the sensationalized media in this country. So much so that it took MSNBC a very long time to decide to leave that burning cabin in the woods the other night and focus on the State of the Union address. For those listeners in Hong Kong, we had a manhunt going on in Los Angeles um, for a policeman who was kicked off the force who had put out a decree stating that he was going to kill as many cops as he could before they took him in. And it was a debacle. But the fact that there was so much attention focused on the last few minutes of that whole situation, honestly, that was that was sensationalized as well. And I want to say something about Marco Rubio's speech at the same time. We're giving him a lot of attention Um, and the right wing a lot of attention because he drank water and we replay it over and over and over again. And there is a certain amount of pushback and feel good for doing that because they make fun of us. They call Obama names. They do all this stuff to us and we think, okay, so turnabout's fair play. But we don't want to become Fox. Agreed. And that's my DM. Well, well very well stated. Well said. You know. Uh, all right, all right. It is time, everybody. Okay. Yeah. So uh, today, uh, <laughs> when we're taping the show, is uh, Woo, it's uh, Valentine's it's Cupid, Day. Cupid Day. So right. I think it's only fitting that we have a Melvin's feel good. 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 Valentine's Day, and if you've got somebody, I hope you treated them well. Flowers, balloons, cards, uh, all that, all those nice things. Uh, and if you do not have somebody, no worries, everybody. Melvin is here to help you out. BuzzFeed.com compiled a list last week of, of dating sites that you probably wouldn't think exist. Like MissTravel.com. That is, if you are an attractive woman who wants to travel for free, you can meet rich men on MissTravel.com. Darwin Dating <laughs> Dot com, which actually it actually says this dating for terrible people sick of dating websites filled with ugly unattractive desperate fatsos now hold on <laughs> that might not be your thing perhaps your thing 
is the ladies behind bars. Absolutely. Womenbehindbars.com has got the, got the one for you. Now, if you are ugly and you know you're ugly and you're looking for somebody ugly, there's a website for you. That is the uglyball.com. Wait, hold on. Stop, <laughs> stop, stop. I thought this is feel good moment. What, what happened hey, there? Hey, hey, let me, let me, let me finish here. Now, now, if you're a pothead, of course, there's, there's a 420dating.com. There's pounced, pounced.org. Now, that sounds like one that's for, the cat love is right. No, of course not. That's personals.com. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Pounce, pounce.com is for the furries. And for those of you who don't know what a furry is, you can you can look them up. They're they're kind of strange. Hey, if you're a if you're a cougar, if you're an older lady and you're into those younger men, there's a spot for you. Cougars.com. If Ayn Rand is your passion, there's the Atlasphere.com. If you're really into Apple products. There's Cupertino.com. If hey. all you really care is whether or not he has a mustache, there's stashespassions.com. Wow. Uh, dating for little people, dating for tall people. Uh, if you like wearing diapers, honestly, you're a grown up likes wearing diapers. There's diapermates.com. Hey, hey, you can, you can look it all up on buzzfeed.com. They've compiled all these sites with links to them in descriptions. And hey, if you're alone this year, come this time next year, you might have that perfect somebody who's in prison or likes wearing diapers or dressing like a cat whatever <laughs> next year may may be your year but this year i want to end on a positive note there was a there was a story a, a really sweet story that that made the rounds this week and it really couldn't have come at a better time obviously because this kind of stuff gets extra attention it being valentine's and all and i would just like to i would just like to read this it's from a woman obviously lost her husband my sweet husband john and i were married for 46 years Each Valentine's Day, he sent me the most beautiful flowers containing a note with five simple words. My love for you grows. Four children, 46 bouquets, and a lifetime of love were his legacy to me when he passed away two years ago. On my first Valentine's Day alone, 10 months after I lost him, I was shocked to receive a gorgeous bouquet addressed to me from John. Angry and heartbroken, I called the florist to say that there had been a mistake. The florist replied, no, ma'am, it's not a mistake. Before he passed away, your husband prepaid for many years and asked us to guarantee that you'd continue getting bouquets every Valentine's Day. Wow. With my heart in my throat, I hung up the phone and read the attached card. It said, my love for you is eternal. If you have not found love, you can still find love. It's out there. It's real. And it's stronger than death. That's my word. Okay. Uh, nice. You know, uh, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be feel good moment, man. Like, Are you a farmer? There's farmersonly.com. Oh. oh. <laughs> well. Uh, Are you in the, the sailing? There's seacaptaindate.com. Right, right, right. Star Trek. Um. Are you a vegan? Uh, it's yeah. vegan uh, I'm, a, I, I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> so. Well, anyway, uh, well, this is uh, so. This is this week's show, and I ho- hope you enjoy it just uh, as much as we are doing it. And uh, thanks again, uh, Leo, for being with us this week. Thank you, Leo. Oh, well, thank you, Leo. And, thanks uh, for having me. It's been a, been a real pleasure. Don't be a stranger, sir. So again, his uh, his uh, page is a uh, liberal Spokane. Uh, just hop onto Facebook and just uh, type in the Bruce Spokane and you'll be right there. So, well, uh, it, it's wonderful. What a wonderful time. Uh, we have wonderful time. And guess what? We have four people here. So, uh, you know what uh, we Hong Kong Chinese says about having four people in the same room, right? It's time to play Mahjong. See you later. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>